Thanks for joining us. Our channel is Red and April Off Grid. We are making good progress helping our son finish his Hyper Adobe Tiny House. In this episode, we'll be working on the plumbing, pouring some concrete in the bathroom, starting on the cob, and working on the stucco. Well, we're ready to start working on the floors, which will consist of a concrete slab in the bathroom area and earthen floors in the rest of the house. But before we can do that, we'll need to do some more work on the plumbing since all the plumbing will be run underneath the flooring. This is the shower drain I'm working on here. It's not in the correct position, it's too close to the wall and I want to move it more towards the center of the shower pan. The rough plumbing is already in. That's one of the first things that we did before we started building the walls. We ran in the gray water line, the black water line, and the main water line. We just ran them through the footer and then to the general location where they were going to be and then stubbed them up from there. While I'm working on the plumbing here, Kyle is doing some painting on the ceiling. And here I'm working on a gray water drain for the clothes washer. It's stubbed up about a foot too far inside the house, and so I need to move it over closer to the wall, and I'm also adding a P-trap. Overall, this is a pretty simple plumbing project. The kitchen is right next to the bathroom area, so the plumbing is all pretty close together. I finished moving the gray water drain, and now I'm moving on to a water manifold. We have the water coming in through a three-quarter inch PEX pipe, and I'm bringing that into a manifold where I can send it to the various user locations through the house. We'll also be running a red line over to the hot water heater, which will be on the other side of the bathroom. We're using PEX for all the water line in the house. It's real easy material to work with. We've had really good luck with the fittings ceiling and not having any leaks. And I did run quite a bit of it when we put in the rough plumbing originally, but there are a few more lines that I'm going to have to run. Don't know if you can see it here, but I've dug a shallow trench along the walls that I'll be running the remainder of the PEX plumbing in. Now I'm running this red line over to the hot water heater. The red PEX is rated for high temperature use, so you always want to use the red when you're working with hot water. Also makes it easy to tell later on which goes to which. We'll be installing the hot water heater here. Kyle is planning to use the same hot water heater that we've used in our house. It's a 20 gallon that operates on 1500 watts of power. So our solar systems are quite capable of producing that. And so it's really nice to be able to get all of your hot water needs from solar energy. And just a fun fact, Kyle is rather stoic and frugal. And so for the last year and a half that he's been here, he has not had any hot showers in his house. He takes cold showers. So having hot water here and taking hot showers will be quite a luxury for him. In the meantime, Kyle has been working on the stucco and he's made some really good progress. He's almost finished with his first coat. The top part is a bit more challenging to get to. He's been using a scaffolding to do that. As he goes along the top, he's also making sure that the stucco that he puts up there forms a taper so that any water that might get up in there will run down off of that little lip and then down the wall. He's mostly been spreading this by hand. He tried using a trowel, which worked okay, but it left a smoother surface, which seems to be more likely to crack. And so the very uh, organic texture that you get by applying it by hand seems to be the most crack resistant. Also, it just allows you to work it into the cracks of the bag and actually allows you to apply a thinner coat. When you use a trowel, you have to go on a little thicker. Kyle is using some good clean mortar sand that we had left over from our build to do this stucco. He's using a standard mix ratio of three parts sand to one part Portland cement. And he's mixing that in a bucket here, which you know creates about four gallon of product, fills the bucket up pretty good, and it creates a nice amount. It's enough that he can, it keeps him busy for a while, but he can use it all up before it starts to set up. This is kind of a repetitive process. It's something you just gotta keep doing, batch after batch. But if you keep at it, eventually it'll be complete. Meanwhile, back to the plumbing. I'm on the inside getting ready to run some of those hot water lines. I'm gonna be running hot water to the shower, which is nearby where I'm working, and also to the kitchen sink and to the bathroom sink. So just getting some of that set up. It is nice that everything is so close right here. The shower is right here to my left, and then on to my right will be the washer and dryer, and then further right of that will be the kitchen sink. 
One nice thing here is we haven't had to buy any pecs for this project. We've just been using some leftover pecs that we had from our home build that we didn't have anything to do with, so it's been free to Kyle and it's nice to be able to use extra material. With this small of a house, you really don't need very much materials to do a lot of things, and so there's been several instances where we've been able to use leftover scrap material to you know, build something or do something with in his house, and it's really nice to be able to reduce waste and save money. And here I'm just finishing up a cold water line that I ran to the toilet and the bathroom sink. And that pretty much finishes up the running of the lines. I then insulated the hot water lines and buried everything, and that finishes up the plumbing. Kyle is still working on the stucco outside. He's nearly done. He's just working on that top section and coming around the corner there. And now the first coat is complete. It looks awesome, and we hope to have a family work party to help him put on the second coat. Next up, we created the forms for the concrete pour of the bathroom floor, and we put in the base layers. So the layers that go underneath the concrete are a layer of plastic and a layer of foam insulation. Before we could start on the concrete, though, we needed to get more sand. So we went back to our place and loaded up the rest of the mortar sand. Turns out, we don't think we'll have enough mortar sand to do the concrete floor and the stucco, and we want to save it for the stucco. So we need to find some sand elsewhere on the property to use for the concrete. Last year, we were able to get quite a bit of sand out of our pond, and we used that in part of our concrete slab in our house. So we went back to the pond this year to see how much sand was in there. There was quite a bit of sand, but it was mixed with a lot of silt, so it wasn't ideal. We needed to find a cleaner source of sand. So we went around looking and we realized that the inlets to the pond is where all the sand was dropping out. Whereas before it was dropping out in the pond, last year it was dropping out before it got to the pond. So kind of all along the side of the road and right before it comes into our pond is where the sand had dropped out. And so we were able to harvest a lot of good clean sand from that area. Well, it's the day of the pour, and so we're just arriving, getting started here. We're going to be getting everything situated and getting ready to start mixing concrete. Here I am gathering up some gravel out of a pile that we've been using that was left over from one of the septic builds here on the property. And now we're just gathering all the tools up and getting everything situated and ready to go. I think we've about decided to go ahead and do the mixing inside of the house. And so we're bringing these mixer inside and getting it as close to the pour area as possible so hopefully we can dump the materials into it from one side and then turn it over to the other side and dump it directly into the bathroom floor area. Since we're mixing it inside it's especially important to wear good respiratory protection. Portland cement is a really fine powder that's horrible for your lungs. We're also wearing ear protection as well. Normally I like to measure out my materials in buckets and then dump it into the mixer so that I get real precise measurements of my material, but this time in order to save energy and try to work as efficiently as possible, we're just measuring by a shovelful. So I'm shoveling directly from the wheelbarrow into the mixer, and the ratio that we're using is a 1-2-3 ratio. It's a high strength mix ratio, and it uses one part Portland cement, two parts sand, and three parts stone. It's working pretty well to dump it directly into the pour area, but we have to use a little piece of OSB to make a little ramp so that it all actually goes into the formed area. And Kyle's having to work on the inside there. He's kind of down on his hands and knees, pulling the concrete from where it's dumped and then you know, pushing it to where it goes and working it from there. This worked pretty good for him. I was able to focus on mixing and he was able to work right in there and you know, get all the concrete leveled and even with the forms and everything, especially since we didn't have a guide along the back of the wall, it was useful for him to be in there with the level on the board that he was using to screen to do all that work. But unfortunately, it did mean that he's crawling around in that concrete and some of that concrete ended up soaking through his pants around his, the knee area. This wasn't bothering him at the time. In fact, all through the pour, his knees weren't hurting at all. But unfortunately, shortly after we got done with this concrete pad, we realized that that chemical was actually starting to burn his knees. So he got some chemical burns on his knees. It wasn't so bad that he needed to seek medical treatment, but I would say it was close. It was very uncomfortable for him and ended up taking quite a while to heal. So that's definitely something to be mindful of when you're doing this type of work. Chemical burns are a thing and it can make very serious burns. 
The chemical burns don't happen right away. The natural oils on our skin do provide some protection, but with prolonged exposure, it can remove those natural oils that provide protection, and then your skin can become burned. And I think just his knees working back and forth in the cloth, rubbing on his knees, helped remove that oil. And then in those exposed areas, it ended up getting burned. But anyway, back to the project. This is coming along quite nicely. We're just doing batch after batch, pouring it in. We're getting really close to being done here. We are leaving an open space where the shower floor will be. We will come back in later and pour that separately since it'll be at a different elevation. Kyle has been screeding as he goes along, so the concrete level on the floor that we've already done is already quite close. And so as we get done here, it's pretty easy to tell how much material we need, and we're down to the last few batches. Really, the last little bit that we need to do here is this little strip over by the shower, which will be a place that we'll build a shower wall. Also of note, we are aware of the dry pour method that is all the rage right now, and it is very interesting. Uh, however, Kyle was more interested in a tried and true method that he felt 100% confident in, didn't want to try that here. And we had already purchased the Portland cement that we needed for this, not to mention the fact that we were able to get the sand free from the place and use gravel that we already had. And now we've finished with the mixing, and we're just going over it to give it one final screeding, starting to work on the surface finishing. Next up, we'll be getting out the bull float and using that to smooth things down. This is something that April's good at, so she's jumping in here to give us a hand to get things smoothed out and finished up nicely. It was about this time that Kyle realized that his knees were in bad shape, so he went inside to change clothes and to wash off. He also found out that it was good to apply some vinegar to neutralize the acid or base or whatever it is that's going on there to stop the damage. And so he's doing that as we're working on the final finishing touches. I ended up using a piece of OSB to make a little platform for myself so that I could get out there and do some handwork around all the pipe that was coming up through the pad. Once that was done, we were able to remove that and go over it with the bull float. We ended up letting it dry for an hour or so, and then we came back in and smoothed it out again and used the edger to go around the edges, and that finished up the concrete pad. The next thing we need to do to finish out the interior is to apply the cob to the walls. We've never done cob before, and so we decided it would be a good idea to do a test batch, apply it to the walls, and give it a few days to dry to see how it turned out and see how the mixture worked out. So now we've sifted some dirt, we've mixed it with some sand that we harvested off the place, and mixed it with some grass that we harvested off the place as well, and we've chopped up finely. We've mixed all that together with some water, and we're about to start applying it to the walls. And here we are applying it. We just want to apply this first batch and let it, let it dry and see how it does. It seems to be going on well. It's sticking to these bags nicely, it's filling in the cracks nicely, and in one coat we're able to get a pretty even surface. Once that was applied, we let it dry for a day or so. It dried pretty quickly, and when we came back, we weren't seeing any cracking. It looked very stable, looked nice, and so we think this mix ratio will work out great. We have a family work party planned here in a few days to do some cobbing on the inside, and we need to get plenty of sand accumulated and ready for that project. So we're back at the inlet of our pond to gather up some of that good clean sand and taking it back up to Kyle's place. Now we're backing the trailer up close to provide easy access to the sand and materials, and we should be all ready for the workday. We have the first coat of stucco on, and it's looking great, and we'd like to put the second coat on, but we've decided that the priority right now is to do the cob on the inside walls so that we can get the walls finished so that then we can finish the rest of the floors. Well, family workday is here when we have a couple of our daughters and son-in-law that have come up to help. We're just getting started mixing the stucco. It's nice that we'll be able to mix this in the cement mixer since it's not too sticky. The cement mixer works great for this, and so we can make bigger batches that'll keep everybody busy for a while. And there's plenty of time that this cob doesn't dry real quickly, so we have plenty of time to work it. It was quite a windy day, and we had a lot of wind blasting through the house, through this window and then out the open door. 
And so we decided to go ahead and install the window. It was ready, just hadn't got it done yet, so I decided now was a good time to do it to keep the wind from blasting everybody all day. Everything was ready, I just needed to apply some sealant and screw it in place. And now just a few touch-ups and the window is installed. Our granddaughter's having way too much fun playing in the dirt. Closely supervised, of course. As you can see, this is coming along quickly. It's also kind of fun work. I think everyone enjoyed doing it. There's just something fun about applying mud to a wall, and it's, it's a fun experience. And we were able to keep everyone busy with just one person mixing, which is nice, being able to mix those big batches. We worked for a couple of hours and got quite a bit done before lunch. And here's a picture of the grass material that we're using as a binder in the cob. We were able to harvest this from the land. We just went out with some big shears and cut off some of the tall grass that grows out in the summertime and had dried over the winter. And then we put it in a big 45 gallon barrel and chopped it up using a weed eater. And that's how we were able to get it to this finer consistency. And then we just mix that in with the dirt and sand. We're using a one-to-one -one ratio of sand to soil, and that seems to be working out well for us. The type of, you know, every, all soil is different, and with our soil type, that ratio worked out, so it would be different for everybody that tries it. But that gave us enough sand that it's not cracking, but yet enough soil that it's sticky and wants to stick to the walls. And so what we were doing was using one five gallon bucket of soil, one five gallon bucket of sand, and then one and a half gallons of that chopped up grass straw as a binder. And here's a close up look of our daughter's technique to apply. She just uses her hand and presses it firmly into the crack and into the bag material. And she's just scraping out the barrel and we're getting another batch here. Try to keep a new batch coming and keep everyone busy. I will say it's impressive how well this mix sticks to the wall and forms and applies, and also how hard it dries. Our son-in-law mentioned that as well when he came over and, you know, knocked on it some and felt it. Uh, he was surprised when we told him it didn't have cement in it. He, he figured it did because it was so hard. So it really sets up hard and makes a really nice hard surface. It is kind of weird just smearing mud on a wall, and this is going to be the finished surface. It's kind of strange, but it is really fun, and it looks like it's going to be a great surface. This natural building stuff is really cool. It's really neat to be using a natural material that humans have been using to build houses basically since they started building houses, since the earliest structures. Well, it was a great day. We got about two-thirds done. In our next video, we'll be finishing up the cob and stucco and starting on the earthen floors. Thank you for joining us. If you want to see more of this build and other projects, be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. 